Alright guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have Inland's PCIe Zen 5 SSD costs 350 USDs and it's quite loud. Yeah, an SSD. Intel is also preparing video super resolution for Chrome just like NVIDIA super resolution for Chrome of course. Emu Ryzen 7040 Phoenix series will not be featuring 3 GHz RDNA 3 clocks for the APUs. And lastly we have AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT GPU drops in pricing. And it's quite a big drop. So firstly, we have Micro Center bringing in this PCIe Gen 5 X4 NVMe M.2 SSD coming from Inland, which is a two terabyte module. And well, this uh, this is quite expensive to be fair. Three forty nine ninety nine, two fifty USDs. It was also four hundred dollars, so you can save up to fifty USDs, even though it's quite expensive. Literally, you can buy a RTX 3060 with this pricing. So that's kind of crazy, but then again, it's a two terabyte module, so it kind of makes sense. But the thing is, it is quite loud because as you can see, there's a fan attached to it right there. So it also has a heat sink, which is for the passive cooling, of course. But it's not enough, I guess, because that fan is, I guess, needed. But the problem is, it's quite loud. We actually made a video uh, earlier testing. Well, I believe that was Copite Seven Kimmy that leaked that where. There was a SSD like this that was uh, in manufacturing and it was, oh yeah, it was quite loud. And well, I guess they're marketing it, but I don't know, like, is it really good? Like the fan? Or is it really necessary? Like, I don't know, it's quite loud. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at the right hand side up in the corner. That's the video that I'm linking there. You should check it out. It's You will know how loud that is. Crazy loud. But if you look into the read speed and write speed, well, they're quite fast. 10,000 megabytes per second and, well, 9,005 or 95,000, I should say. Is it 95,000? Am I looking at right? 95,000. Oh my, but why is the comma right here? Anyway, like 90, I, I think that's an error or maybe it's not. It should be 9,500, I believe, but 95,000, I think it's an error or something, but I could be completely wrong, but that's quite a lot for read and write speed, and it kind of makes sense because a Gen 5 SSD doesn't make that much surprising, you know, so, holy. Next up, we have uh, this update coming from Bionic Squash, or Squash Bionic, this is Twitter user, and tells that it can be enabled in Chrome by adding this command to the Chrome properties, which is this Chrome properties and if you look into it it says Intel VP super resolution basically what he's trying to say is that uh, Intel is also preparing some sort of video upscaling for Chrome so basically in any video literally in, in Chrome browser you can use this and well upscale the image quality from 1080p to 4k I guess and we have some examples so if you look into here this is an example we're looking at this Apex Legends uh, image or a video here basically and it has been upscaled and if you look into this more detailed as you can see it is using that intel uh, virtual super resolution for the upscaling we also have more uh, exp uh well you could say some examples here and as you can see that's the 1080p data 360p 1080p upscaled which is a uh, normal upscaling that you could say as you can, uh, and as you can see it's quite blurry here but using Intel video super resolution and also using the i5-11400 so it's a, I guess it's a processor based upscaling so it's kind of nice if you have an Intel processor you might be able to use it without any hassle and as you can see it's more detailed and already I can tell there's it's detailed much better detailed we also have this uh, example here which kind of gives you a better clear picture because it's quite blurry as you can see but look at this very impressive, right? I don't know which tech they're using. I mean, which uh, processor they're using, but at that, I'm pretty sure they're using the Intel Super Resolution here. And well, it's it's night and day difference for sure. So they might be onto something. Literally, they might be onto something. And if that is the case, well, Intel has a competition now, even in this well Chrome browser extension or. Or if I don't know if it's an extension or not, but you can literally enable this feature using this, I guess. I haven't tested that, but I will test it and I'll share my thoughts on that. Next up we have AMD Ryzen uh, 9 7940 HS and then we also have uh, 7840 HS and the 7640 HS. Basically these are the APUs coming from AMD. These are the uh, 
Uh, well, as you can see, there's a Gen 4 APU is coming in. This is the 8 core module, the Ryzen 9 7940H, which is kind of strange that they're going for 8 cores for this one. Very weird, but anyway, it doesn't matter. The max boost clock, we're looking at 5.2, so good enough. Over 5 gigahertz, nice. The base clock, 4, nothing surprising there. Well, of course, then the L3 cache will be smaller, 16 megabytes. But the thing is, if you look into the graphics compatibility here, we have the graphics model, AMD Radeon 780M. Basically, this is an APU, that's why they have the support for the iGPU. But the graphics frequency we're looking at, which is 2800 megahertz. In the previous Gen 3 APUs, it was over 3 GHz, like 3.1 to 3.2. But now, this time around, we're looking at it's lower than 3 GHz, which is, as you can see, 2800 MHz. Same goes for the 7840HS, if you look into it. By the way, it also has the max boost clock of 5.1 over 5 GHz, so nice. That's not a problem here. But when you look into the graphics compatibility here, AMD Radeon 780M, they're using the same graphics module, but... A lower frequency 2700 megahertz and for the 7640h we hs i should correct myself there we also have the same well 76m this time around and graphics frequency will be 2600 megahertz so they're not reaching over 3 gigahertz it seems like and yeah that's quite clear that the maximum we have is the 2800 megahertz previously uh, pre pre i mean in previous generation of these apus basically they had the same Ariane 2 graphics, I guess, and well, they had a higher frequency, but now this time around, they will not be having higher frequency. I don't know if that impacts performance or anything. It, sh it shouldn't because, you know, it's a better architecture. It, again, graphics frequency can be different. It always comes down to the architecture, but we'll see about that. And Ariane 3 is pretty good, so it shouldn't be a problem. Before getting into the next news, I want you to subscribe and it really I would really appreciate it if you do and of course keep watching because there's more news to come. Next up we have Newegg basically, uh, well we have the pricing for the ASRock Phantom Gaming Radeon RX 7900XC which is a 20 gigs GD26X memory module card here and well if you look into it the pricing here is $7.99 the MSRP was 8 dollars and this is this is exactly an MSRP card basically this is the reference board so yeah it's not overclockable I mean not crazy overclocked but yeah as you can see it's $7.99 so an MSRP card coming at $7.99 which, which is $100 less than MSRP I mean this is a huge deal not gonna lie well, and as also you can see that uh, this is out of stock because they have limited 20 per customer. 20 per customer is still quite a lot. You know, it can be scalped, but then again, scalping doesn't really exist in this present time anymore. So that's not really an issue here, but it's out of stock now. And I, I'm not surprised why it's out of stock because it's $7.99. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. Even for the power color, in Amazon, we're looking at PowerColor AMD Radeon RX 7900. This is the literal uh, reference board here, which is coming at 819 basically. I mean, it's still cheaper. $80 cheaper. $100, $80, I'll take it. It's still cheaper. So that's quite impressive that we're looking at 7900 XT going down in price already. And to be honest, it kind of makes sense why 7900 XT going pri uh, down in pricing. Because it's selling less because, like, for example, the performance gap between 7900 XT and 7900 XTX is quite a lot, right? But the price gap is not too much, only $100. So it's better to go with the 7900 XTX rather than 7900 XT. So it kind of makes sense why the pricing of 7900 XT is going down. And at this point, I think this this, this pricing is kind of makes sense, $799 or $800, whatever you want to call it. That kind of makes more sense in my opinion because, you know, as you can see, it's selling more now. So, kind of makes sense, right? And, yeah, I appreciate this pricing. I would still love to see around, as uh, you know, a 750 USD for this card, you know, just saying. So, yeah, we'll see about that. But for now, this is a good deal to get it because $200 less now. I mean, if you can con con uh, consider the $200 gap between the pricing, you know. If we consider that, then I think this is a good pricing for this 7900 XT card here. What do you think? Oh, right, that is it for today. What do you think about the Intel video of, well, upscale for the Chrome uh, browser? 
I'm I, I'm guessing they're gonna be adding some extension for that because usually they do that, or maybe it's just you would require a hardware to run. Um, I mean, we literally just saw that it uses an i5 11 4 or 11 400 something like that. So yeah, I guess this is a processor based upscaling, not a GPU based, because Nvidia is using a GPU based upscaling for the video upscaling. So yeah, I don't know about that, but we'll see about what's going to happen there. And also the pricing for the 7900 XT has gone down. Seems like a good deal to me. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and of course, like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.